Our presentation is on Sony Group Corporation by Victoria Boudreau, Marti Corda, Robert Minot, Evan Robles, and Lauren Normandini. Learning about the company history on Sony's website was very interesting. The company started after the war in Japan during 1945. Masuro Ibuka was the owner and he originally called it Telecommunications Research Institute. He supplied many radios during the war because everyone was so hungry for news. Ibuka could not do it all himself, so he asked a friend to join him. Eventually, Akio Morita became the co-owner with him. Interestingly enough, their first product together was an electric rice cooker, as you can see in the picture. Nobody thought Sony's first product was an electric rice cooker, and neither did I. But this is pretty cool. Some of the products that they had to produce was the wire recorder, which was later known as the tape recorder, which took them some time to figure out the name. Through trial and error, they finally got it. In March of 1952, Ibuka went to America to see how production was going. And after the tape recorder, the team wanted to perfect the best radio. After the radio, it went from the stereo recording microphones to the video tape recorder to a VTR, and finally a Triniton, which is a TV, also their bestseller. Sony Corp of America started in February 1960. Sony's controls. Sony has mandated that its business units, subsidiaries, affiliates, and corporate divisions review and assess risk periodically while establishing and maintaining the necessary risk management systems, such as detection, communication, evaluation, and response for the area of business they oversee. Also, senior executives at Sony, including C-level executive officers, have both the authority and responsibility to establish and maintain a system to identify and control risks that may cause losses to Sony Group regarding their area they are in charge of. C-level executives will also have the responsibility of evaluating and managing the risk of the entire Sony Group. And finally, the corporate executive officer in charge of group risk control is additionally responsible for comprehensively promoting and managing the establishment and maintenance of the systems as stated above. Now, we're going to talk about Sony's corporate culture. The corporate culture of every company is very important. This is due to the fact that the company's culture will determine how the company is viewed and perceived and how the company acts and reacts with the rest of the world and within itself. Since Sony is a technological based company, it needs its corporate culture and structure to allow them to grow and innovate. For this reason, Sony's corporate culture is centered around its most important assets. These assets are customers and employees. First, we're going to talk about customer satisfaction. Sony prides itself on having a company culture around customer satisfaction. Sony's corporate culture for consumers stands on three major pillars. Reliable, which stands for customers' viewpoints and expectations. Credible, which stands for customers' voice. And cordial, which stands for customers' expectation. For the second point, we're going to be talking about employee satisfaction. Sony's philosophy is special you, diverse Sony. They have a company culture of inclusiveness. It prides itself on having the workers on the same level as the company. They see their employees as partners of the company. Their HR strategy is to attract, develop, and engage talented individuals. For our last point in Sony's corporate culture, we are going to be talking about sustainability. In 1990, Sony started pursuing environmental initiatives, and by 2010, Sony declared Road to Zero. This means that Sony will have zero environmental footprint on all their operations by the year 2050. Sony's corporate structure. Organizational structure or corporate structure is the way an organization formally arranges its domestic and international units or activities and the relationships among those components. Several different organizational structures exist, but Sony is a balanced matrix. A balanced matrix company is a company composed of one or more organizational structures that attempts to mesh product, regional, functional, and other expertises together. Sony made the following changes in their 2021 corporate restructuring. 
One, they launched Sony Group Corporation, which would replace their old company name, Sony Corporation. The name Sony Corporation was to be given to Sony Electronics Corporation, which will continue serving as an intermediate holding company. Their financial service business will now become a wholly owned subsidiary of Sony Group Corporation, which they plan to work closely with to implement new measures to increase service value. And also, they optimize their executive structure by creating a board consisting of the heads of key headquarter functions and business companies. Advantages. While most international companies tend to avoid a matrix structure, there are some advantages. Notably, improved employee motivation, maximized resource usage, increased levels of teamwork, and increased professional development. Indeed notes that because there's a lot of horizontal movement between teams and employee repurposing, employees are able to learn new skills and fill other roles that they would not normally fill or learn. It should also be noted that teams are constantly working with other teams to complete tasks and projects, which further develops their team working skills. Despite the numerous advantages of a matrix structure, it is not perfect and also has its drawbacks. One obvious drawback of this structure is multiple managers with overlapping responsibilities. This often leads to power politics and poor compromises that can adversely affect the company's performance. There's also the drawback of generally delayed responses between teams that companies must work to overcome, especially when it comes to time-sensitive decisions. Another disadvantage of the matrix structure is double reporting that lower level employees are subject to, often causing frustrations and demoralizing the employees. Instead of a matrix structure, Sony should opt for a matrix overlay instead, which attempts to solve the problems of the matrix structure by requiring accountability of all functions in the organization, which helps avoid the management complications that a pure matrix structure has. Sony's competitive strategy is involved in many market sectors, such as electronics, gaming, entertainment, and financial services. As you can see to the right of the slide, we have devices such as cameras, game and network services, Sony Pictures, and music. Each of these need a competitive strategy in order to increase profitability and maintain its certain position. For Sony, they choose to use Porter's generic model, which determines how profitable each product can be based on what strategy they choose. Now we are going to look at how Sony uses Porter's generic competitive strategies to determine whether their firm is above or below average in terms of profitability. Inside Porter's generic strategy, we find that there are two types of competitive strategies, differentiation and low cost. Each of these strategies go into a different scope of activities that allow us to see which one is the most profitable. In Sony's case, they choose to use the competitive strategy differentiation when determining how profitable they are in their market. In the next slide, we'll use a specific example. When we take a look at how Sony uses the competitive strategy to differentiation, we find it most prevalent in electronics, gaming, and entertainment services. For example, pro Sony has a product named the PlayStation. Now there's the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation 5. There are other competitors out there like Microsoft, which has the Xbox, and Nintendo, such as Wii U and other products out there like the Switch. When we take a look at how these products are designed, compared all the way down to the utility, the way that they're designed, and the features that it has, we find that the PlayStation sticks out the most because of the color and unique features it has. We, the PlayStation has multiple flaps, can have different edges, different you know shapes that are not necessarily normal in that space. For example, the Microsoft Xbox is essentially a box, and the Nintendo consoles are almost resembling as an iPad. This allows Sony to have a significant market share because a lot of people are attracted to the design and details. Unfortunately, products in the electronic gaming and entertainment services are constantly changing due to market trends and technology being available. This means that Sony has to be able to maintain and grow its market share within its respective areas, such as the gaming entertainment console, the PlayStation. Just like I've mentioned before, there are multiple versions of the PlayStation, and each one are competitive and unique and have a certain attractability compared to their other competitors' new products. Now, for example, the PS5 was released last year in 2020. Now, when this product came out, it was significantly different from the Xbox and the other uh, competitors such as Nintendo. It's had different colors that it was never seen before and the way that it had a different uh, way of moving, such as where the product was placed, how it was placed and how it actually operated uh, was due to innovation and product novelty that allowed Sony to have a competitive advantage over their competitors. Market research analysis, Sony needs to be able to keep products up to date, meaning if products aren't up to date, they won't sell well. In the picture on this slide, for example, the Walkman sold extremely well in Japan. 
and since Sony originates from Japan, they were able to tell that that was going to sell well. However, when it tried to go overseas, it did not sell well in the United States at all. So it struggled to keep an innovative mindset. They had to think not only locally, but internationally as well. Other things like press play, which had no competition to iTunes when it came out. PC World actually commented to them saying it charged $15 a month to listen to 500 low quality audio streams, download 50 audio tracks and burn 10 tracks to CD. So consumers likes and preferences the customers, if they don't like the product, they won't buy it. It's as simple as that. So Sony needs to be able to see the customer's buying preferences and see over time what they prefer to buy over what they don't in order to make the money for it. For Sony, weather is an extremely important factor when it comes to uncontrollable forces. Nobody can simply tell the rain to go away or the hurricane to choose another path in order for them to be able to ship supplies and products across the sea. Same thing goes with in the country, is if roads get blocked off, streets are flooded, nobody can get their supplies, and transportation won't be in full effect. When COVID-19 started, and people started catching it, factories started getting shut down, supplies weren't there, and products weren't being made, so there was a low supply with a higher demand of things. Such products, for example, would be um, toilet paper. There just wasn't enough for everyone. But Sony, since they were an electronic company, they were able to still make um, profit off of their computers as well as TVs and devices, which was a good thing for them. With Sony's controllable forces, they were most definitely able to adjust to cultural differences across the world, which included prices and governments. Over the past 75 years, they've made a plethora of products with various purposes. Because of this, their ability to have their company travel across the world was controlled by the fact that they had a variety of products produced for different functions. With prices, they also put gross national income into effect with what people made overseas, as well as how much they made in their own country. Within the governments, if we're comparing the US and Japan, the government is similar um, in the fact that they both have a head executive branch which the U.S. calls the president, but Japan is called the prime minister. So there's not too much differences within that of pricing and adjusting to cultural differences within the electronics spectrum. For Sony, they have to create strategic approaches in order to take control over consumers and create successful products to bring in profit to make up for the products that failed and brought in loss. So for their strategic approaches, they used diversification. In the early 2000s, they created many different kinds of music players, one including the mini disc that failed overseas in a couple slides ago I mentioned. Um, with the PlayStation 4, which is on the right of this slide, you can see that many people know what this item is because it was an extremely successful product. So because they make products like this that are able to make up for products that failed even years ago, they are able to control the, control their consumers in a way that they know what they want to buy and they see the value in that product so they're able to make those purchases. In this way, Sony is able to make profit and be able to become a successful company overseas. Sony has been a successful company from the start, but two of their successes in the beginning were Sony received the first Emmy awarded for the Triniton Color TV, and Sony also purchased Columbia Pictures and renamed it Sony Pictures Entertainment in 1991, which is actually pretty cool. Other than that, throughout the history of time, Sony has been so successful, and even today, it's such a big company. There's only been big two failures that Sony has done. Sony quit laptops and PCs and lost about $4.6 billion. And then Sony also has been hacked and they have been fined for $250,000. So other than that, they are good.